Hi guys. Uh, so uh, I'm Arnab. Uh, I uh, have been uh, working with uh, native Android development uh, for quite some time. I run a software development bootcamp in uh, Delhi. Uh, we teach people mobile development, web development, data science. Sort of thing. So uh, I sometimes these days there are some small uh, projects to build and uh, needs cross platform. So I have explored a uh, couple of uh, different things. Uh, I've used Native Script, React Native, Flutter also. So basically, uh, this talk is about uh, I have taken uh, a project, exact same app, but using three platforms. So React Native is not here because I think there are a lot of people who already talk about React Native. So my point was to discuss about uh, things uh, not React Native, all the other things, and give a comparison between them. Uh, so uh, this is a very famous project uh, built by uh, Thingster. So Thingster is a online uh, software learning platform. So uh, they, uh, what they do is they have this uh, project you can go to realworld.io and visit. So it's uh, really nice. What they've done is they have created a, a subset of medium features. There are articles, users, people can make uh, comments on articles, and they've created a standard API for that. Okay, and anybody can build a backend which uh, produces that API and anybody can build a front-end that consumes that uh, API. So it's a standard API and if you want to learn any stack, you want to learn any backend stack like Django, Node.js, you can you can make this your capstone project, build this API. Similarly, if you're learning front-end, you can make this your capstone project and finally build this thing. Okay, so uh, this is how it looks like, uh, uh, the web exemplary version. So is this is a list of articles, you can favorite those articles, uh, you can uh, sort articles by certain tags, you can sign in and sign up. So at the core of it, functionality is like medium, but like it's not very polished and finished because it's the purpose of it is just to demo that we can build something like this. So this is the web version and uh, similarly, uh, you can of course do something very similar to this uh, on mobile. Uh, there are like users, you can follow users, then you can see feed, like global feed is everybody's latest post, uh, your feed means our, pe our feed from people who you have followed, so creating articles, uh, all that stuff. So uh, for a mobile it would like I guess look somewhat like this, uh, you will see articles and uh, You can log in and register and all that stuff. So basically, everything that's available on the web version, uh, try to create uh, the same thing for mobile. Uh, haven't really worked uh, to create a exceptionally beautiful looking UI. The point was just to be able to build in three platforms and see and benchmark the results between them. So, uh, before you go to the rest of the presentation, just for context, because of course, uh, you will be seeing some numbers like memory usage, CPU usage, all of that. Uh, judge that based on this context that I am pretty experienced with uh, native and uh, native script I have uh, only uh, like explored it uh, very recently but I have uh, like native script you can build using angular or using Vue, uh, uh, right and with Vue.js I have a lot of experience so I have a uh, few libraries I have published which are very popular so I know like the best patterns that are used inside Vue.js so uh, that way Vue as it is I know Native script I have been delving a little bit uh, recently. Flutter is something I had read about quite a few times before, but this is actually the first time I am building an app on Flutter. So, like the level of experience is very different on three platforms for me. So, judge all the rest of the things based on that. Might be wrong about a few things on Flutter or Native script as well because not something I know as much as native I know. Um, so, the first thing let's talk about is developer experience. I feel that. Uh, uh, you know, uh, I really like this quote by uh, David Henmeyer Hansen from who the founder of Ruby on Rails is, uh, I will trade a few CPU cycles for developer cycles any day, uh, is that a uh, lot of times when you have a fast moving product, people being able to build things quickly is more important than 5-10% of performance, okay. That's very important to ship products, uh, right. So that's just something I consider myself also very important. First of all, IDs that are available to work on these platforms, you can use Android Studio of course for Android development native or you can use IntelliJ IDEA with the Android uh, plugin. Uh, for uh, native script, uh, native script is not a very ID dependent uh, platform, right? 
uh, most of the uh, uh, you know read me and all if you go through uh, in native script uh, they would suggest everything doing it via the tns uh, cli command so you can literally use any id that is good for web development you can use uh, webstorm you can use vs code atom brackets does not really matter like uh, there is no very deep level integration uh, there is a vuejs plugin for uh, an angular plugin for uh, webstorm and vs code both which work really well make syntax highlighting and all very better um flutter also uh, can work with a lot of ids it can work with uh, most of the uh, jetbrains based ids because uh, there is a flutter plugin that comes that you can install in webstorm or intellij idea or android studio and uh, you can work with vs code as well the best experience though is uh, pairing it with android studio because then you can do uh, breakpoint debugging and all of that stuff is available only via android studio otherwise it's not uh, available and the hot reload also uh, if you are using it with some other id mostly you have to press the r button to do hot reload if you're using the android studio it, every time you save the file hot reload automatically happens so best experience is with android so first of all my experience uh, getting started uh, so this is something i have uh, done it on a fresh laptop uh, with the fresh installation uh, so android like just download the studio the sdk and straight away i did not find any uh, problem getting started which even for a like although i am experienced but somebody who is a novice should also not find a problem because if you follow the steps i did that and i was able to build the hello world app uh, and there there was no hiccups in that and i did not need to go down into the command line to do anything for this this was pretty much double click to install and then this gui based stuff was work uh, next uh, my experience with uh, flutter was it does have uh, one or two command line steps to install the flutter sdk uh, you have to of the like on mac you have to uh, usually put it in the off slash flutter folder like that uh, after flutter was installed uh, then uh, most of the things were pretty automated and smooth uh, in uh, android studio gui based steps are there to create your first project and run it uh, immediately so first project worked out of the box there was no hiccups in that uh, native script uh, this is something also with react native also have faced this uh, these js based frameworks there is a whole set of node modules to download and some version compatibility and all so just i was following the step by step instruction as it is available on the website even doing that i faced some problems the first project that was generated did not build i had to change my cocoa pods version i had to uh, also like change the swift version in my config file couple of things need to be changed even for the first time even without writing any bit of code so that is my experience to get started with these things um one thing uh, is very uh, uh, you know interesting is these days uh, all these uh, cross platform languages so my uh, native script one i built using typescript so if i take typescript dart uh, kotlin and swift so cross platform languages which are very popular people are using these days uh, although like the patterns that exist uh, the architecture patterns that exist the way people develop on them might be different but if you look at the core syntactical level things are much more similar than you might wonder in fact just to make this slide i realized that some of things are pretty similar like uh, starting off with how you do your hello world printing to declaring variables and constants uh, creating arrays uh, tuples uh, all of that is pretty easy you can uh, create hash map kind of things javascript objects are directly hash map same thing is available in all of these other languages uh, your uh, streaming operations map reduce filter they are available in all four languages similar syntax for them with uh, classes of course are available uh, everywhere uh, again very similar syntax uh, interfaces uh, so there is something uh, specifically called interface in uh, swift kotlin typescript and dart is just uh, create abstract classes there is no specific way of doing an interface make an abstract class everything is abstract inside that that works like an interface um so uh one thing only tuple returns so tuple returns is something that uh, dart does not support uh, or i don't know i have just been using dart for one month uh typescript swift and kotlin you can do uh, tuple returns like multiple value returns kind of thing. uh downcasting something that uh, is like if you check if a variable is of a particular type like this uh, then inside that you can uh, direct like uh, uh, before this if condition uh, the language does not know whether this object is of type movie or not 
but when inside the if block uh, current dot name kind of things work so this is something that uh, people who use a bit old school language like java and objective c complain that they don't have this kind of thing you have to do a manual cast it does, uh, all these four languages have proper down casting support uh, next up uh, what are the uh, you know common design patterns that exist in these languages because having a good design pattern that a lot of people have uh, tried it out and built on apps of big scale it uh, helps a lot because you don't have to think a lot where your state will go where your components will go how the reactivity would be working so uh, first of all talking about uh, native thing uh, how many of you people are native developers kotlin android you done so lot of different design patterns exist way too many blog articles comparing these right mvp mvc mvpm all are there if you want to do rx uh, reactive then rx java rx android uh, that's also available um, the most officially recommended one these days is i think the mvpm one with live data that uh, google promotes uh, most but everything else is also available uh, with uh, native script it depends a lot whether you choose to go with angular or with vue because your design pattern would depend on what web framework you're using with native script native script uh, does not provide its own any design pattern it just asks you to use any framework that you want if you're using angular uh, people with angular i think usually prefer to use uh, rxjs uh, and with uh, vuejs there is a view model like system and you use uh, vuex which is the state management uh, pattern that exists inside vuejs okay so it largely depends on which you want to use uh it's a uh, view uh, vuex is very flux based uh, kind of thing um so as i started off with flutter i felt like uh, this is something that was uh, lacking because uh i saw like uh, some of the people who are most well renowned in the flutter community and their articles they are all a lot about how to do animations how to create views very little about what uh, you know solid uh, design patterns exist for state management reactivity and all of that stuff so i mean it's you can go over the internet search you will find to there are three four articles all of them have very radically different ways of managing data uh, google officially is uh, promoting something called block which is business logic component uh, pattern so uh, that is what i tried using in my project as well next uh, comparison of some common tools uh, how they are available across uh, these platforms so i think first of all drag and drop gui build as something uh, microsoft made famous with windows form uh, so of course android you have got a full featured gui editor a uh, lot of people you know start off like they have like one or two ex years experience of android they have been building with the gui editor only have not gone down and manually edited xml files it's that good uh, with native script there is no uh, gui builder available uh, you have to write your templates down in code in html uh, xml basically and in uh, flutter so there is no official support but there is a website called flutterstudio.app on which you can do some drag and drop editing and you get a skeleton you get a dart file you can export from there and you can paste it into your project and start from there so it's not something you can do live with your project but every page you can start off with a basic skeleton you can build on flutter studio and import it and continue here so there is some third party kind of support okay um breakpoint debugging uh, how many of you prefer to just print lines instead of breakpoint debugging how many of you have used breakpoint debugging a lot use breakpoint debugging okay so how do you do breakpoint debugging where you have race conditions heading and all how do you just use print ln lines so is it important feature to have do you think okay so uh, with android of course uh, jvm based breakpoint debugging properly works uh, as we know right uh, native script has a breakpoint debugging system that works over web sockets so like during debugging the socket connection can break so it's not something i felt very reliable it is there like as as far as it's just checking a box it is there but does not really work very much well so with native script apps all the debugging i have done with console.log lines only uh, is not something that was helpful to work with in a long uh, long duration okay uh flutter has something uh, that works now um, i don't know somebody who has worked with flutter a lot would be able to say but uh, my experience was that it works well when connecting with android phones does not work so much well when debugging ios phones 
and again it's uh, of course more much more reliable than uh, the native script one but not as rock solid as native development works not uh, something like that also there are like uh, sometimes you are doing a breakpoint debugging and at the breakpoint there is some uh, field which is basically a getter so the getter has to be executed to find out the value so those kind of things uh, don't properly work is what i experience okay hot reload good feature to have is a good feature to have uh, so uh, of course android has a very uh, you know fraud hot reload thing it restarts your activity so it restarts your activity the life cycle goes away so you don't actually have hot reload okay uh, so the instant uh, thing plus uh, i think uh, if you go if you have a big code base then the instant run stops working most of the times if you use like third party libraries bunch of the third party libraries will break your instant run so it's not something that works at scale with big projects it does not work uh, native script has uh, both the things available it has a uh, activity restarting kind of uh, hot reload all available uh, which is a bundle reloaded says uh, via webpack and very recently just two three months back they have uh, launched proper uh, hot module replacement which uses the webpack hmr thing which react native has been having for a long time native script has that and uh, originally it could only replace javascript changes now if you make changes to your xml or your css that also gets reflected immediately uh, now flutter's hmr is something that is i think uh, not comparable to these two things it's very different in its way of operation and it does not break at any kind of scale and it's uh, works really nice data changes styling changes everything works perfectly fine and uh, this is something that works in below 1 second latency kind of hot reload that is something that the others don't have uh, a later technical detail though it actually works because uh, when you are running it in a debug mode then the entire uh, flutter vm is copied into your app and your code is directly interpreted in a production app uh, your flutter code is compiled into native and that is put into your app. so the way they do debug mode that's why there it's possible to do hot reload really nice uh, so testing frameworks uh, android uh, native people who have done they would know uh, you can do certain tests on your laptop's jvm itself the unit tests if there are things that depends on android dot anything classes then that has to be done on the device right uh, so that is the instrumentation test you have to have a device connected with that um, flutter also has uh, well supported unit testing patterns the default project that's created has sample tests inside it and uh, with flutter you can run all your tests uh, without a device uh, you, without a simulator or a device you can run all your tests the ui ones and the normal ones as well uh, native script uh, does not have any inbuilt uh, testing uh, framework or the sample project that is generated also does not contain any sample tests but your usual tools that you use for unit testing in view or angular you can use like uh, mocha or you can use uh, jest and all of that stuff so that you can just continue to use those things that will work okay uh, there are uh, like your testing uh setup should be pure js it should not have any native dependency okay so most of the testing frameworks are pure js only so that works that's uh, what i did uh now here is something uh, where differences uh, start showing up so data deserialization uh, at run time so that's basically converting your uh, json or xml to data classes so for android and all you probably be using something like json or uh, faster xml jackson these kind of things uh here is something where the javascript based uh, systems like uh, react native and native script uh, is that json does not need to be converted so not a concern at all right uh, if you are using typescript then you might need to create your de class definition files so that you get auto complete for your uh, the json objects okay um now this is something that i felt uh, was a big disadvantage with flutter flutter does not support reflection so if you reflection everybody knows right so uh, run time reflection is not available in flutter okay this is reflection is not available that means that uh, you cannot build libraries like json in flutter the json kind of libraries they work with reflection they would be uh, basically at the run time looking at your class object and changing the fields one by one 
So I will just show the code how it works in Flutter. In Flutter you have to generate the deserialization code as part of your source code. Okay. So like native if you have done without JSON like you do get JSON object, get string, get boolean, get int kind of those things. So that entire code has to be pre-generated as your in, inside your source code. Now if you are working with an API that has say you know 60-70 types of models. So you will have 60-70 files for data deserialization in your Flutter code base. So that is uh, something that I felt increases your code base a bit. Uh, certain fields uh, like date time fields and all you will have to write some validators and some converters also inside it. So there are plugins available these days which does uh, generate automatically these kind of fields. But most of these plugins what they do is like you take a JSON object, you copy paste it into the plugin, it will generate the automatically deserialized uh, code. But it will treat the date as a string because it's basically a string, it won't realize that it's a date formatted string. So those changes you will have to do. Um, two way data binding, so uh, I think this is something people uh, who move from web development to mobile development feel like why is it not available here. Uh, with live data it has just been possible in Android having proper two way data binding. Uh, native script uh, has two way data binding as long as Angular or Vue supports it. Uh, so Flutter there is no uh, you know conventional two way data binding. So you know what like the standard two way data binding should support is like you have an input field, you have a text field. You type into the input field immediately the text field changes without any writing any on text change kind of things. Okay. So that as it is does not exist in Flutter there is widget bindings available but uh, not something as simple as two way data binding. Like connect the input field and output field to the same string object and change is automatically reflect that is not available. So ORMs, I think just discussed about ORMs a little while back. Uh, so Flutter uh, will probably never have a ORM as long as they don't support uh, runtime reflector. Okay. Uh, so if they support that then only an ORM also it is a similar thing as uh, converting JSON objects again. Right. So being able to generate the queries will need reflection to see the class fields. That is not available. So no ORMs available. Android of course has lot of ORMs available, any Java ORM works and native script, uh, so there is a ORM called uh, type ORM, it is a typescript written ORM uh, which works. So uh, I in fact myself have added the support for native script into type ORM some time back. So uh, with Flutter uh, you cannot uh, avoid writing any SQL at all, that is not possible, you have to write a bit of SQL even if you use SQ flight, SQ flight is the most uh, used one, uh, library I have seen. Uh, this is something uh, integrating native widgets. So integrating native widgets means that if you want to put a web view inside your app or you want to put a Google Maps container in your app. So that is something I mean with Android of course it is possible. With native script also it is possible because in native script the rendering of the views happens via native widgets only. So your business logic is JS but the rendering of the views is happening via your proper native widget. So anything that is seen in your screen like let me talk to you in context of Android. Basically, everything you see in your screen is basically an object that extends from the view class. Right. So, with native script uh, and even with React Native, the same thing happens. Flutter generates it its own pixels. It is like a game engine kind of a thing. It takes the full screen canvas and it uses SKIA and generates its own pixels. Which means, like, if you want a small portion of your app to have a native widget inside it, so that is straightforward. It was not possible, there is a native widget that has recently launched but it works only on Android and it is a bit buggy, does not really work well, that is what I saw. So uh, uh, let me do this is uh, the walk through the code base, uh, just uh, note on this links first, I will do it at the end so that uh, amount of time available uh, about this, I will go through the benchmark numbers first. So uh, if anybody wants to see this app code base. Uh, for the Kotlin one, it is cb.lk slash rwappkt. The native script one is rwappns and the Flutter one is rwappfl. Okay. So cb.lk slash real world app Flutter Kotlin and native script. So it's published on GitHub, you can check that out. Let me quickly go through the numbers, I think, which is something that would interest everybody most. Then we will actually, I'll just show that on my laptop, the code base as well. Uh, so yeah, starting with the debug app size. Uh, so, you seen what the app does, 
shows a list of articles you can comment on the articles login that's all that's available not a very complex app very simple app in fact okay so debug app size uh, as you can see uh, native script one of course is going to be big because it has a js runtime inside it the flutter one is also big because it has a flutter vm inside it uh, android one is 3.6 mb uh, flutter the numbers change drastically when you go to production mode because now it does not have the flutter vm inside it it is compiled down to native so the app size reduces um, ios app size is uh, flutter is 62 mb uh, that's because it contains the 32 bit and the 64 bit both things available inside it i don't have a lot of experience with ios i don't know if we can create separate bundles for 32 bit or 64 bit on android you can do that so with native script you if you put every architecture into the same app bundle it would be 25 mb or something in size you can make it 10 mb apps for each architecture arm v7 Uh, ARM 64. You can make separate bundles for that, and on Play Store you can upload it as separate bundles if you want to. Uh, the native scripts iOS app is also pretty big. Uh, this is the this is the production app size. Okay. Okay. So peak CPU usage. Uh, take the numbers in context of the Android ones are running on a four thread device, and the iOS one is running on a twelve thread device. Okay. So uh, peak CPU usage. Usually happens like when uh, the first time the entire list of articles is generated, those kind of places. Uh, so this is the highest spike I have taken. Uh, I think Native Script has the high, uh, highest peak CPU usage as uh, far as I have seen. This is the consistent CPU usage, uh, like the average CPU usage when you use the app for a long uh, uh, part of the time. Of course, Native is going to be lowest. Uh, is what I saw. Uh, Native Script flutter a little bit uh, more. Now in uh, iOS, there is a more stark difference between native script and Flutter. Flutter does take a lot of uh, CPU usage. In a 12 thread uh, device, 4% is pretty much on the higher side. Native apps don't take that much CPU usage on iOS usually. So this is peak memory usage, uh, and uh, Android apps. Uh, I don't know why, but we're taking a little bit more memory in my benchmark uh, tests that I've done, uh, and Flutter takes the maximum amount of peak memory usage. Memory-wise, uh, Flutter does hog a, a lot of memory. So peak memory, average memory. Again, on average memory, also Flutter apps take almost double the amount of memory as Android. Could attribute it to me being inexperienced, so I don't probably know all the ways to optimize for memory usage. Uh, just using Flutter for the first time to make an app. Uh, something about this: about uh, how many people have used Flutter before? Anybody here? Okay, you've used a bit. You know about stateless, stateful widgets. Okay, so there's a nice article I saw on uh, Medium recently about somebody who created a stopwatch using Flutter, and uh, basically like the digits are changing continuously. So like the CPU usage for creating the stopwatch he created originally it was pretty high. When he did was he created each digit as a separate widget. Then it means that the millisecond one changes ten a uh, hundred times every second, but the second one changes only once a second. And then the minute one changes only once every fifty seconds. So that brought down the CPU usage by, I think, it made it like I think ten uh, percent of the original CPU usage, and memory usage also dropped. So there are things that you can optimize for. Uh, uh, those kind of things are there. Okay, lines of code has taken to build uh, this app. Uh, Android one is eleven uh, hundred lines of code, but five hundred of that is XML. So a lot of boilerplate inside that XML. Automatically files are pretty big. We, we match parent, wrap content, all that stuff. So you have to write a lot of that. The native script uh, line. So I've given this breakdown because uh, in the native script one there is two uh, thirty lines of code is uh, Vue.js, which is my components. One uh, fifty lines of PS code, which is for my API calls and all. And DTS files there is hundred, which is basically only the definitions of the JSON. So I can actually still build this app without those part of the source code. Flutter app. Code that I have written is around 470 lines. Uh, 270 of it is uh, this uh, data decentralization code, which also becomes part of my source code anyway. So that's the lines of code uh, and uh, the build times. This is uh, clean build times with a empty build directory. Uh, Android one takes around 32 seconds. Native script 30 seconds. Flutter 50 seconds. Uh, in iOS it takes 30 and 40 seconds respectively. Uh, this is the warm build so this is not the hot module replacement builds this is like 
uh, you are uh, just made some changes in your file and just built it again without cleaning the build directory that was those kind of builds so that's again comparable sizes 8 seconds 7 seconds like that none of the apps uh, none of the three platforms i had used too many third party libraries so those factors are not here it's a very simple app so these are the times and uh, so finally time taken to develop uh, these uh, projects for me uh, now this is i think uh, uh, pretty good for the flutter time because it took me less time than it took me to build native something that i have 6 7 years of experience and this is something i have one month of experience so it still took me less time to build using flutter the same thing uh, native script also took me around the same amount of time uh, so that's the amount of time that's taken to build uh, this is done via a uh, website called waka time you can install the plugins and it sees the amount of time so just for context this is time of actually writing code so it does not measure the time when your id is open and you are doing something else that time is not factored into it okay so but this is just uh, like net time would have been like something more than this of course okay. thinking about the architecture and all that stuff so i guess uh, uh, so that's it in the slides. Uh, let me just give you a, a walkthrough to code base how it looks like. Uh, this, these slides would be available on speakerdeck.com slash champion streamer. Uh, I will publish that by today itself if you uh, want to. Uh, over the first one, uh, yeah. So, So native code base is uh, somewhat like simple app that you build with a V model kind of thing. There are uh, the adapters for uh, the there's the main activity. There are fragments for the home screen, the login screen, and all of that stuff. It's uh, I built it using a single activity only, and uh, like there's a data class and stuff. It's all uh, this thing. So it's a uh, retrofit based, so lot less code for the API gathering and stuff. Uh, completely made in the uh, thing. Uh, then size. Uh, Okay, so the Flutter one has uh, like uh, built it using a concept of pages which is basically every route you go there is a home page, there is a login page and a register page and stuff like that. Uh, there are, uh, so the model that I was saying is if you take say a JSON response, uh, so, so there is an article object inside which uh, there is image following bio username like that. So you have to generate this kind of uh, code for every JSON object that you want to parse. Uh, this is uh, simple because there are only strings. If there is something a uh, date time, so you have to you can't just do directly equal to. You have to convert it into a date object and that. So there is usually plugins like Android Studio has uh, this plugin which uh, can uh, do like a Dart Bean class form JSON. You paste your JSON into this. Like RoboPojo generator exists for Android uh, data class uh, creation also. You paste your JSON here, give the class name, and it will generate uh, this thing for you. If you need specific converters for any particular field, you have to add those things. But yeah, like most of my code like contains a lot of these data serialization uh, entities basically. And uh, like the API calls are uh, pretty simple uh, to create async await kind of uh, things that exist in JS. You uh, do get articles, uh, fetch the articles, and all that stuff. Um, so yeah. And finally, the native script one, I think not a lot of people uh, would be familiar, but the thing is the app structure looks pretty much like how you create a Vue.js front-end app. Um, again, this has like router. So this is something that people who do native development is something that usually they don't start off with understanding the concept of router, but people who come from a web world, they have this URL and page kind of uh, notion. So you create routers and every route you go to uh, then a uh, certain page opens up. Uh, here also like API requests are pretty similar. You create async await functions to fetch data and uh, here also like models exist but these are simply 
interfaces for the models. There is the data conversion logic, of course, JSON is JavaScript only, so we don't need that. And uh, we can just like it exists in we have seen with Flutter, there are uh, components which work like widgets, so they are single file components. So there is the template part of it where you uh, write your UI, there's the script part of it where you write the business logic, and there is a style part where you can write the CSS all in a single file. So a really nice thing I felt is like CSS directly works, like you can write uh, CSS simply like this or you can attach a font family to your entire app directly from CSS. I think Android people would really love this because using calligraphy and all that stuff, they are just font family and it works across the entire uh, project. Uh, you can use things like font awesome or material design, this, uh, font based icons, those can be directly used. So yeah, I guess that's it. Uh, anybody has any questions? Time's up. Anyway.